asset as an ally. Um, so we'll see if Portugal really does help us. And now that we kind of have a military going, let's take a look at our government. So we're an administrative republic. Um, elections held every four years. We have to wait 8.4 years for a policy change. This gives us plus 10 trade, plus 1 yearly magistrate, plus 1 toler tolerance of heretics, and plus 1 tolerance of heathens. Um, so I'm thinking, I don't know where I want to go with this. Um, uh, I kind of I want to go to the plutocracy. Um, just because it's so good right now, like, it'll give us more diplomats a year, uh, lower the cavalry cost, plus 0.6% of leader shock, um, and it'll reduce regiment cost. Uh... uh this, if I go naval, will decrease the colonist costs. I don't really care about the navy that much. Um, but it will increase tariffs, which is pretty much more money. Reduce the cost of building ships. Um, and I think also maintaining them, but it will increase the cost of land troops, which are very you know, necessary. Um, now, if we went for defensive... Uh, it'll give us artillery cost will be cheaper, which I don't think we can build artillery yet. So that's kind of irrelevant, but that's more like for later on in life. Um, it'll give us more siege for a leader. Uh, it'll give us more fort defense, but I don't really foresee us being attacked. That's what we got going on right now, I guess. Um, whereas if we go offensive, it'll give us more morale. Increase the cost of artillery, but that doesn't really matter. Um, that's kind of like something we can save, I guess. It'll give us more spies if we go mercantilism. Mer 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 mercantilism. Uh... Free trade, it's very effective. I do like free trade. Um, let's go free trade. With the relaxation of restrictions on foreign merchants, some of our own traders feel that they are not getting enough state support and have decided to switch careers. So we lose three merchants. Um, oh well. It's not the worst that could have happened. I want to take a look here at our budget. Um, yep, we'll make a bank. How many merchants do we have? Two. Or we have one. We get two a year. Um, so let's see. We do, I believe, have a merchant here. Yes, we have a merchant in Venezia. Venezia. Let's see. Uh, get one in Liguria. 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 Just a ton of money. Let's see if we can get one in Liguria. Uh, free advisor slots. What do we want to do? We only got two. Monthly stability. Um, yeah. Um, now that we're making some kind of money, we can afford to put some advisors on there. Let's play again. Let's see what we can do. We're establishing a merchant in Luguria. So that's nice. That'll give us a little more money and trade. We have two prestige now instead of zero. So we're going up, although I think all our prestige is pretty much from being part of the Holy Roman Empire and normal gains. 
Oh, well. It's still prestige, no matter how you look at it. Um, I wonder how many soldiers Romania, or not, not Romania, the Papal States have. So we got some diplomats back. Let's take a look at possibly getting, nope. Um, we have a trade agreement with Aragon. How about Castile? Um, not for an alliance, never mind. Castillo isn't going to give us like the Casa Spelli free or anything, but they're still a very powerful ally to have. England. England will give us a trade agreement. So we got some stuff here. Doge, our government technology level increased to nine. We have learned new ways to rule. Bonus effect allows another idea. My Doge, we are sorry to inform that England ah. Uh, England declined a trade agreement. Curse you, England. Why would they do that? It said likely. And they still declined it. Oh, we got some rebel trouble up here in Württemberg. And the Palatinate. Or Palatinate. Um, we have a war between Bohemia and Bavaria. Um... I believe Bohemia Bavaria, yes. Because Salzburg has like the same color as, as uh, Bohemia. I was like, Salzburg attacking? I don't know. Uh, we also got, looks like Austria is also on the side of Bohemia fighting against Bavaria. Bavaria is screwed. Bavaria is so screwed. Uh, we got pretty much peaceful. We got these two countries that are kind of like right next to each other Venice and Styria and they just really should not be next to each other with that kind of color it's, it's like very similar it's even if you look at it it's still kind of hard to depict them apart even though it's quite obvious uh, so we got a new idea here and our new idea what will our new idea be uh, land force limits plus 33 that'll be that'll be great because it'll allow us to build a larger army for such a small nation, which would be great. Exploration. That's also great because I, I kind of want to become a colonial power. Uh, so these exploration ideas will work really effectively with what I want to do. Uh, spy defense, I don't really care about that. Tax modifier is also good because this allows you more money. Inflation reduction is it's kind of there. Trade efficiency, that's up there as well, especially when we do get colonies and revolt risk. I don't really know that that's so much of a necessity. Um, Popple influence, I don't, I don't really care about this culture, religion, uh, influence. Uh, stability cost modifier, that, that's good. Um, Popple influence. Uh, let's look at some of these layered woods. Army morale, I don't think that's really that necessary. Uh, leader siege, for defense, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, tradition, army tradition, I don't really know. Prestige from land battles, yeah. Manpower modifiers, now that's also good. That will allow us to build an army faster. Um, you can recruit spores and con conquistadors. Colonial range, plus 50%. Um... That's actually really, really good. Because um, if we get the quest for the new world, that pretty much allows us, I believe, to go out and explore on our own instead of just being given stuff. So essentially what you have to do in Europe Universalis 3 is you got to pretty much sit back and wait until an event happens that essentially says we have discovered blah, blah, blah. And then it appears on your map. Uh... And I believe it only does that for North Africa until you actually get to the Americas. But I believe if you get this quest for the New World, it allows you to actually go out and explore on your own instead of waiting uh, for things to just kind of pop up. Um, yearly colonists is also good. It's really hard to choose between that and just kind of sitting on colonists because yearly colonists, this will mean we'll get two colonists a year, which means we'd be able to 
to uh, colonize faster, whereas if we do this, we'll be able to explore and discover the land faster, but will we be able to actually colonize it? I don't think so. Not without the colonists, and we got like one. We get one per year. Um, but if we were to do this, then we get two per year. Which means we'd be able to colonize at a much faster rate, but we wouldn't really be able to, uh, um, actually discover the land. So we'd have to wait for it to be discovered. So that's kind of, that's kind of something that's really good when you're already explored. Let's go quest for new world, uh, I believe. Um, do you wish to embrace the idea of quest for the new world? Yes. It might be stupid for me to have done that, but I did it. Um, let's see. Now, do we need a thousand yet? Let's see. <laughs> it was probably stupid of me to do that. Um... I honestly don't really know what I'm doing. I don't play Europa 3 too much. Um, so I honestly don't know what I'm doing. I probably picked the wrong thing. But we'll see. Uh, it says I can recruit conquistadors and explorers, but I don't know how. Maybe in here. Um, I don't really know how to, though. Recruit great man. I don't think that's what we need. Commission a painting. Sure. Um. We can recruit explorers and conquistadors. Um. Uh, I don't know. Let's. Let's try something here. I want to send all my ships just in case they get lost. 